Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. It's awfully cold out there. 19 degrees officially in the triangle. I'll show you what the, what the temperature is as you're stepping out the door with the wind chill. And with the cold and chilly temperatures this morning, many people will be cranking up the heat. Just ahead, I'll explain how Duke Energy is preparing for that high demand. And a firefighter injured battling a house fire in Raleigh. How the freezing temperatures are adding to the challenges of getting that fire under control this morning. Mm. 8 o'clock straight up is the time like that. And there are challenges out there for everyone oh, with yeah. these types of temperatures. I'm Jeff Hogan. And I'm Michelle McConaughey. Yeah, it is a frigid start uh, due to the cold and several uh, several school systems are adjusting their schedules mm -hmm. today. Yeah, schools uh, you see here on this map in yellow have all delayed their start times. Wake, Durham, Orange counties included. The red one there, that county, Mecklenburg County, Virginia. Schools closed there. Mm. To see the full list on WRL.com, you can go to the bottom of your screen as well. But we're going to start with meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner showing us what those temperatures are as you walk out the door, Elizabeth. You know, the sun's been up for a little while, and it looks pretty, but it'll take some time before those temperatures start to creep up. So the actual temperature is on the left, and the wind chill is on the right. And that's what it feels like when you step outside. 13 in Southern Pines. It feels like 16 in Fayetteville and 15 in Clinton, as well as Goldsboro. 13 Rocky Mount, 12 in South Hill, and 10 in Roxboro. A couple hours ago, it felt like 8 degrees in Roxboro. We'll start to warm things up just a touch over the next couple of days, and then we get hit by another Arctic blast over the weekend. We'll check that out in just a little while. It is pretty out there. We're seeing clear skies, 19 officially at RDU. The wind is calm, so we don't have a wind chill. But uh, for most folks, we're going to see the temperatures feeling like teens up until around 11 o'clock uh, this morning. And then only 30 to 31 is what it will feel like later on this afternoon. And we'll sort of walk through our wind chill as we get through the day. Uh, around 9 o'clock, it'll still feel like mid to upper teens. By lunchtime, it feels like mid 20 to near 30 and then this afternoon it feels like low 30s even though the temperature will be 41 so it doesn't take that much wind to make it feel really chilly actual temperature 35 at lunchtime and around 41 for the high uh, coming up over the weekend highs will be in the 30s but the wind chills could be in the single digits at some point I'll show you coming up Brian Elizabeth it's 802 right now we're keeping an eye on that camera at 440 and Capitol Boulevard there's a report of a crash there on the ramps Somewhere at that 440 Capitol Boulevard interchange. Originally, it came in as a call on the ramps from 440 westbound to Capitol Boulevard. Now it looks like there may be a crash there on the ramp from southbound Capitol Boulevard onto 440 westbound. Looks like a Raleigh police cruiser out there. We are seeing some congestion, in whatever is causing it, as you head between 87 up toward Capitol Boulevard on 440 westbound. About a six-minute delay overall. Not a huge backup, but just something you want to keep in mind there on the east side of Raleigh. Still seeing some sun glare delays. We'll get a closer look at those in just a second. Just getting reports of a crash on the south side of Holly Springs on 55 bypass westbound right around Main Street there at that intersection and some delays showing up in both directions. Here's a look at 40 at 55 in Durham that eastbound side slowing down because of the congestion and also that sun getting in driver's eyes right now on the south side of Durham about a five minute delay from 15501 to 885 on 40 eastbound and as you head away from the airport on 40 eastbound from 540 back to Wade Avenue we're also seeing about a five minute delay. Remember, if you're leaving the house right now in the triangle, you can listen to us on the radio at 99.3 FM in Raleigh and 96.5 FM in Durham to get our traffic updates there. I'll let you know when that sun glare delay starts to clear up a little bit. Some good news in Fayetteville on the north side of town. We've been watching a crash on 295 southbound just before you get to Ramsey Street and 401. It looks like that is starting to clear up. Just a little bit of a delay lingering at this point. So a lot of folks in our area are getting ready, you know, just taking precautions, shall we say, for this cold weather. A lot of schools across the area delaying their start times, as we mentioned, Wake, Durham, Orange counties among them. Warming shelters are also open to help keep, keep people warm. And those utility companies preparing for a surge in energy use. WIRL's Laura Levine is in Raleigh right now where people are going to need to bundle up before they step out this morning, Laura. And, and you are living proof you can speak firsthand about it. 
Jeff, I have to tell you this morning, we saw someone here on Fayetteville Street with a blanket over their head as they were walking, really dashing to their car. It is so cold out here. Uh, I just checked. It is now 19 degrees in downtown Raleigh. The sun is up, but it's really not making a big difference. Uh, behind me, though, good news. We're not seeing any ice or anything like that on the road. It's just really cold. Officials with the state emergency management office tells us that when we see winter weather like this, even without precipitation, we could still see power outages in different areas because of the strain that is placed on the infrastructure. We spoke with people yesterday bracing for today's cold snap, uh, stocking up on non-perishable food, battery-powered radios, first aid kits, and blankets is key. Duke Energy is preparing to see some of its highest customer demand this week. The utility has taken steps this winter by completing maintenance at all of its plants, also improving the performance of its outage rotation software. This comes as the state emergency response team meets with several agencies to prepare for any impacts of this winter event. As part of that, uh, we have a joint collaborative program that targets uh, known travel hotspots during winter storms, and it places troopers, National Guard soldiers, and DOT personnel together so that we can uh, quickly and decisively respond to travel incidents. Now, Duke Energy says at this time they are not telling and encouraging customers to conserve energy just yet. But when it comes to that point, they will send out an alert via text message, phone call or email. Laura Levine, WRL News. We're live in Raleigh. These are certainly times you want to make sure you have the WRL News app downloaded for up to the minute forecasts and alerts. You can download it wherever you get your apps. And breaking news out of Wake County, the freezing temperatures are giving trouble to crews fighting a house fire, leaving one firefighter hurt. It happened on Carnoustie right Way that is just off of Creedmoor Road. That's near NC 540. Five people who were inside were able to get out safely. Brett Nice was there in the WRL breaking news tracker with the problems the crew faced. This fire happened here at this home just before midnight and crew spent over seven hours working to put it out because at one point the road where this home sits froze solid. Take a look. This is a video from the WRL breaking news tracker of some of the damage that is unbelievable to see here to this home. Fire officials tell me that working smoke detectors woke up the family of five. That's why they were able to make it out safely. And once they got here, both floors were fully engulfed in flames. As for these freezing cold temperatures, that caused some issues for firefighters. At one point, they had to call NCDOT to put some salt and sand on the roadway because some of the water that they had used froze solid. So they weren't able to safely replace which trucks were battling the fire. One firefighter was injured. He was taken to the hospital for precautionary reasons, but is expected to be OK. Investigators tell me they're going to wait until it's safe to go inside the home. That's when they'll look at exactly what caused this fire. They don't believe it's anything suspicious, but I'll stay on top of that part of the story and keep you updated. In Wake County, Brett East, WRL News. Raleigh City Council says it has no resolution on the table calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. The council adjourned last night just before 11 after hearing nearly four hours of speakers calling on them to take a side on the war in Israel. Thank you everyone for being here this evening. That concludes our um, meeting and we are adjourned. Thank you. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. And that was how the live stream of the council meeting ended. At the meeting, 217 people on both sides of the Israel-Gaza debate we're given one minute each to share their thoughts. People who are pro-Palestinian want city council to formally support a ceasefire in Gaza and an end to U.S. funding for the Israeli military. On the other side, people made passionate statements advocating for the protection of Israel. How can there be a ceasefire when Hamas still calls for the destruction of Israel? Not passing a ceasefire resolution means voting yes to a continuation of this violence. Raleigh Mayor Marianne Baldwin was not in attendance for Tuesday night's meeting. She is traveling out of state for a conference. A 60-year-old woman and a one-and-a-half-year-old child are dead after being hit by a vehicle in Rocky Mount. The crash happened just after 4 o'clock Tuesday afternoon on Kingston Avenue. Police say a woman who was driving westbound on that road hit and killed the woman and child. Authorities say the woman and child were related. We are working to learn more about the woman and child and whether any charges will be filed against that driver.
And this morning, North Carolina is preparing for a presidential visit. President Biden is coming to the Triangle tomorrow. Right now, few details about the president's visit have been released. However, the White House says pres the president will discuss the economy, jobs created during his tenure, and his investing in America agenda. North Carolina's primary election is March 5th. Biden will be the only Democrat on the ballot. And Wake County property owners, you should find out this week how much you'll have to pay in property taxes. Homes in Wake County increased in value by an average of 53 percent in the early 2024 revaluation process. The tax administrator proposed a lower property tax rate for the county starting July 1st to keep the revenue neutral. That means you'll likely pay about the same as you did this fiscal year. NFL playoffs continued this weekend on WRL and Fox 50. Saturday night at 8, San Francisco 49ers host the Green Bay Packers in the NFC Divisional Round. Then on Sunday at 3, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers travel to Detroit to play the Lions. That game will air on WRL. Epic Games and Apple are taking major blows to their appeals over their App Store lawsuits. Coming up, why the Supreme Court says they won't hear the company's arguments over the latest ruling. And two women thought they were headed to an Alaskan cruise of their dreams, but they were never booked on it. Coming up, the charges one North Carolina man now faces after scamming them out of thousands of dollars. And that coat's going to feel good all day long. This is our wind chill forecast. By lunchtime, it may feel like mid-20s this afternoon, low 30s. The next few days will feel slightly warmer, but we're in for another Arctic blast this weekend. I'll show you what to expect. Eight thirteen, and it looks beautiful outside. Take a look at Roxborough, which is typically one of our coldest spots. A little bit of a breeze. You can see the flag on the courthouse lawn moving just a touch. I'll tell you, it doesn't take very much wind for the wind chill to really feel a lot colder than the actual temperature. We're going to continue to see sunshine thanks to high pressure that's sitting in the middle of the country. That high is drawing down the cold air from Canada, though. A true Arctic blast for today. Tomorrow and Friday, the temperatures will moderate a little bit, and then we see another Arctic blast behind this next system. You see all the snow across parts of the west. That's going to swing through here late Thursday night into early Friday. Not as snow for us, but likely some snow in the mountains. We'll see just a little bit of light patchy rain. But then following that, another Arctic outbreak for the weekend. We take a look at what's happening as that system gets closer to us. This is 5 p.m. tomorrow. We'll be nice and sunny today, but we'll see increasing clouds tomorrow. By around 7 o'clock, we start to see a little line of showers. It breaks up really as it moves across our area uh, during the evening. That's going to be 9.30. That's uh, a little less rain than the previous run. We just got this brand new run of the models in. Uh, so this is 11 o'clock, just looking at a few isolated showers. That's 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, notice that it doesn't seem that we're going to change over to snow. And, and honestly, this is a look at one of our high resolution models. Um, some of the other models uh, are now really backing off uh, that very small chance that we could see a flurry. You may see some in the mountains. This is a look at uh, the American model. And it uh, earlier had just the potential for a flurry or two over us during the system, and now it doesn't, but definitely the potential for some snow in the mountains, maybe one to three inches in some of the higher elevations. Same thing with our European model. Um, it had a little, uh, you can see that up near the Virginia line, uh, maybe a quick flurry, but nothing that's going to cause any issues, and it's not going to affect 98% of us. But again, in the mountains, they could end up seeing a, a few inches. Uh, the big impact for us will be the next Arctic outbreak that comes in on Saturday and Sunday. It'll be dry, but look at these temperatures um, up across parts of the country. Des Moines, Saturday morning at minus 30 out. Um, for us, Saturday afternoon may still feel like just mid-20s and getting into Sunday, we could see some single digits. In the afternoon, though, we start to warm back up into the mid-30s warming up into the mid-30s. Saturday's wind chill in the morning, 11, and Sunday morning, 5. But after that, during the day on Sunday, we will start to see a, a bit of a warm-up. Tomorrow will be 49 under increasing clouds, a slight chance of rain Thursday night and very early Friday morning. But most of Friday during the day will be dry. We're not looking at anything frozen with that. Uh, but some very cold temperatures over the weekend. We finally climb up back into the 50s by next Tuesday, Brian. 816 right now, Elizabeth. As we take a look at traffic around the Triangle, we have fairly light volume this morning on our major routes, but we do have some crashes causing some delays. Just getting reports of a crash on the east side of Zebulon on Gannon Avenue at Whitley Street. That apparently is a crash with injuries, and we are seeing some delays showing up there on Gannon Avenue or Highway 97. Still watching this crash in the southern part of Holly Springs at the 55 bypass at Main Street. Some pretty heavy delays building in both directions there on the 55 bypass. Also still have that crash up near RDU at Aviation Parkway at Globe Road, although it is largely cleared at this 
this point, not seeing the kinds of delays we were seeing just a little while ago. A little bit of a sun glare delay persists there on 40 eastbound, heading away from the airport back toward Cary. Once you get to the Harrison Avenue interchange, it clears up nicely. Also in Durham, still seeing a little bit of a sun glare delay on the south side of town on 40 eastbound from Chapel Hill out to 885, about a four-minute delay showing up right now. 40 westbound from Raleigh out toward the airport and into South Durham, about a three-minute delay. But your other major approaches into Durham are looking all right. Also in Fayetteville this morning, we've been watching that crash on 295 southbound. Pleased to report that it has cleared completely. Here's a closer look at the backups because of those sun glare delays there on the south side of Durham. 40 eastbound, right around 55. That whole section there from the Fayetteville Road area out to 885, you're going to run into some uh, brake lights there as people will get into those sun glare backups. Well, winter is hitting with full force in the Great Lakes. This is Erie, Pennsylvania, where the city is blanketed with snow. It remains under a wind chill advisory there this morning with temperatures in the single digits and the snow expected to keep on falling all week. Snow is on the ground in New York Central Park for the first time in almost two years. More than an inch of snow fell in the park Tuesday. First measurable snow since Valentine's Day of 2022. People have been able to enjoy a snow covered Central Park. Israel says it will soon scale down its offense in southern Gaza, but it's ruling out a ceasefire. Meanwhile, the children of Gaza are paying an awful price in the war. The U.N. says there are now there's now famine in Gaza. Children can wait up to eight hours for a single bowl of soup. Many of them have lost their parents and airstrikes. Some have moved along with other siblings, younger siblings, multiple times to try and find a safe space. What we're living is horrible and what we're practically living like animals and we shouldn't live like that. We should live like human beings. The Hamas-run Palestinian Health Ministry says more than 10,000 children have been killed by Israeli airstrikes and ground operations. And happening now in the WRL Live Center, new federal charges in the Club Q nightclub shooting that happened back in 2022 in Colorado. Of course, this is video from that scene when that happened. Uh, Anderson Aldridge is charged with 50 federal hate crimes and 24 firearms violations. The gun charges alone can carry a maximum penalty of death. Aldridge, who identifies as non-binary and uses they, them pronouns, pleaded guilty last June to state charges of murder and 46 counts of attempted murder, one for each person who was uh, killed at the Club 2 shooting that happened on November 19, 2022. Aldridge also pleaded no contest to state charges for hate crimes under a plea agreement. We'll continue to follow this case as it makes its way through the court system. Thanks, Ken. Former Hollywood executive Harvey Weinstein and the CEO of Madison Square Garden, James Dolan, are accused of sexual assault. A woman who was a 23-year-old massage therapist at the time filed a lawsuit yesterday. She accuses Dolan of pressuring her into unwanted sex acts and setting up a meeting with Weinstein that led to him sexually assaulting her. Both Dolan and Weinstein are denying the allegations. Weinstein is currently in prison after being convicted of rape and sexual assault of three women. He was sentenced in 2020. We have a live look for you right now. RDU, where a runway will be replaced after getting federal funding for that project. The Raleigh-Durham Airport Authority is expected to take action to accept the $6 million grant today. Funding coming from the Federal Aviation Administration. Epic Games, the carry-based video game company that created Fortnite, will not get to argue their case before the U.S. Supreme Court. You may remember they sued Apple, saying the App Store's policies blocked competition. A judge recently ruled against that argument, but still required Apple to make some changes to their App Store. Epic Games and Apple appealed to the Supreme Court, but the justices are not taking up the case. This also could be trouble for Apple. They take a commission anytime someone makes a purchase through their App Store. The lower court's ruling in the case forces Apple to let developers provide links pointing users away from the App Store to make those purchases. Two North Carolina women say they were tricked out of thousands of dollars in an Alaskan cruise scam. First off, this is the man, Iredell County deputies charged in the travel scam, Eric Johnson. He owns Carolina Blue Tours in Statesville. Investigators say Johnson took thousands of dollars from his customers and never booked the reservations, transferred the money to his personal account, and told people the trips were canceled. But then he went on the trip himself. Katrina Dima was one of the people who says she is now out about $10,000. It's a trip she had planned with her dad after her mom passed away. 
she passed away about six years ago, so I finally talked him into going on the cruise. Kathy Strance was another person who reportedly gave Johnson about $2,400. She says Johnson wrote her a check for a full refund, but Katrina Dima says she has only been able to reimburse, be reimbursed for about $1,000 out of the $10,000 she gave Johnson. We'll keep you posted on how this investigation plays out. Train rides in our state reached a record high last year. NC by Train says it saw record high ridership in 2023. Passenger rail service in our state carried more than 641,000 passengers last year. That's 23% higher than 2022, when just over half a million passengers took the train. The rail service says making more trips available contributed to the record high. Last year, they added five, a fifth round trip between Raleigh and Charlotte. The second trial between E. Jean Carroll and former President Donald Trump is underway. Coming up, what's expected to happen today for day two of that trial? Plus, there's a new way to for couples to sleep. How the Scandinavian sleep method is helping them get a better night's rest. We'll explain after the break. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning and happy Wednesday. Time now is 826. I'm Michelle McConaughey. It is a very chilly start out there. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner. Uh, Elizabeth, some places not even reaching 20 degrees right now. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. We don't see this uh, kind of weather that often. It is pretty out there. We take a live look at Apex and uh, look down Salem Street. I don't see a soul out there. You know, a lot of times we'll see people running, enjoying, you know, pretty Apex and um, not so much this morning. It's 18 in Lewisbury and in Southern Pines, 21 in Tarboro, 18 South Hill, 20 in our 22 in Goldsboro. But here's the way it feels. It still feels like teens almost everywhere. Uh, the wind chill climbs to 20 uh, closer to lunchtime and only to 31 this afternoon. So just be prepared if you're out walking the dog, you know, put a sweater on your friend there. Um, temperatures this afternoon actually climb to 41 and then drop fairly quickly after that. Brian. We're watching a couple of crashes this morning as we take a look at traffic around the triangle over in Zebulon, a crash on Gannon Avenue at Whitley Street in the clearing stages and in the south part of Holly Springs. Still have this crash on the 55 bypass at Main Street. We've been watching some delays in both directions of I-40 between Raleigh and Durham. Some of that because of sun glare issues as you head away from the airport back toward Cary on 40 eastbound. You're seeing about a three minute delay this morning. Also through south Durham from the 15501 interchange out to 885 on 40 eastbound about a five minute slowdown with sun glare backups. All right, thanks, Brian. Breaking this morning, a family of five is displaced after a fire breaks out at their home in Raleigh. Firefighters responded to the scene around one o'clock this morning on Carnoustie Way. The freezing cold temperatures gave crews a hard time putting that fire out, leaving one firefighter hurt. The family was not hurt. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Next on Fox 50, why parents in Wake County schools need to prepare for another day off in March. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Stepping out the door, RDU 19 degrees, but it feels a lot colder than that with the wind chill. I'll show you what it will feel like where you are. Well, you know, folks, if you're trying to stay warm and energy crews are expecting a strain on the power grid, the steps Duke Energy is taking to prepare for that. And Republican presidential candidates are trying to gain footing in New Hampshire, but they will not take the stage for a debate why the event was called off just days before the vote. We'll get to that and so much more on your Wednesday, your freezing cold Wednesday <laughs> morning. I'm Michelle McConaughey. And I'm Jeff Hogan. Thanks for making us part of your Wednesday. Yeah, cover up any Ooh. anything exposed, you not know, good. any skin that's out there. <laughs> it, you're going to feel it. Certainly, several school systems have adjusted their schedules today because that can't have kids standing out at the bus stop, right? Uh, schools in yellow have delayed the start times. Wake, Durham, Orange Counties, Mecklenburg County up in Virginia has closed. Full list is on WRL.com and on the bottom of your screen. 
And Elizabeth standing by to show us just how cold it is out there. I mean, here in Raleigh, we're not even at 20 degrees right now. Sitting at 19. The one thing that sort of saved us right around the triangle, at least officially at RDU, we've had very little wind. So we haven't had as much wind chill as we're seeing in many other places. It feels like 13 in Southern Pines. The temperature's on the left and the wind chill is on the right. So it feels like 16 in Fayetteville, 15 in Goldsboro, 13 in Rocky Mount. It feels like 12 in Roxboro. A couple hours ago, it felt like eight in Roxboro. And we haven't seen the end of that this week. We're going to see a, another Arctic blast that comes in Saturday and Sunday. But lots of sunshine. Again, temperature 19. This is a live look at downtown Durham with plenty of sun. Um, not much wind. Uh, our wind chill forecast is going to keep things awfully cold today. At lunchtime, it'll still feel like 24. And this afternoon, in the warmest part of the day, it'll feel like low 30s. At least we'll see plenty of sunshine. Walk through the wind chill as we get through the day today. At 9 o'clock, it still feels mostly like teens. By the time we get to lunchtime, it feels like mid to upper 20s. And and then low 30s into the afternoon. So it's um, it's going to be quite a day for this area for sure. Actual temperature 35 at lunchtime and 41 for the high this afternoon. The next thing that we're watching is some light rain on Thursday night. I'll show you the temperatures and the precipitation coming our way in just a bit. Brian 832 taking a look at traffic. We're looking at pretty light volume around the triangle. No big delays right now on I-40 as you head through Garner up towards South Raleigh. A couple of crashes also in the clearing stages this morning, including one on the east side of Central Zebulon at Gannon. And Avenue at Whitley Street. That's a crash with injuries, but it looks like they're good at getting that one cleared up pretty quickly. Not seeing big delays there. Some lingering delays, though, in Holly Springs with a crash reported on the 55 bypass at Main Street at that big intersection there. Both directions seeing a little bit of a slowdown right now. They're getting a crash cleared from the Capitol Boulevard 440 area. It's a minor crash, and I'm not seeing any delays related to that. Only some sun glare delays showing up here on the map. As you head through South Durham on 40 eastbound, about a five minute backup right around the 751 in Fayetteville Road interchanges, and then some slowdowns heading away from the airport back toward Cary on 40 eastbound this morning. Take a look at our major approaches into Raleigh, and you can see those sun glare delays heading away from the airport toward Raleigh, about a four-minute backup on 40 eastbound. And coming in from Wake Forest this morning on southbound Capitol Boulevard, about a four-minute backup from 98 down to the 540 interchange. And so Elizabeth said it, bundle up as you step outside today. Schools across our area have delayed start times because of the cold. Utility companies are preparing for a surge in energy usage. WRO's Laura Levine tells us the steps Duke Energy is taking. Well, we've had temperatures as low as 18 degrees here this morning in downtown Raleigh behind me. We are along Fayetteville Street where typically we can see a lot of people outdoors, typically walking their dogs, exercising, but that is not the case today. Take a look at some of this video of the people we did see early this morning, all bundled up with their hats, scarves, and coats. The Office of State Emergency Management, well, they tell us that when we see winter weather, even without precipitation, we could see power outages in different areas because of the strain that's placed on the infrastructure. We spoke with people yesterday as well, bracing for today's cold snap. Stocking up on non-perishable food, battery-powered radios, and blankets is key. Duke Energy is preparing to see some of its highest customer demand this week. The utility has taken steps this winter by completing maintenance at all of its plants. The utility also improved the performance of its outage rotation software to help ensure the system performs as expected. We spoke with some people here in downtown Raleigh during these extremely cold temperatures. How are you feeling this morning? I'm doing pretty good here. I've got my fall jacket on. I'm from uh, Toronto and they've got a uh, big snowstorm going on. So uh, I'm pretty happy to be here instead. And Duke Energy also says right now they are not advising customers to conserve energy. Instead, they're telling us when it does get to that point, to that extremity, then they will send out an alert via phone call, text message or email. Laura Levine, WREL News in Raleigh. And as temperatures stay below freezing this morning, white flag shelters and warming centers across the area helped people get out of the cold. In Cumberland County, True Vine Ministries, the Salvation Army of the Sand Hills region, and Cornerstone Christian Empowerment Center welcomed folks overnight. The town of Selma will open a warming center today. It's on East Oak Street, open from 9 o'clock this morning until 5 p.m. Johnston County also has warming centers. Anyone looking to get out of the cold can come by the county courthouse, public library, and Smithfield Rescue Mission during regular business hours. And you'll want to make sure you have the WRL News app downloaded for up to the minute forecasts and alerts. You can download it wherever you get your apps. And happening now in the WRL Live Center, as we, you know, deal with the frigid temperatures that we've been talking about all morning, some folks in Japan are having a little fun with their winter weather. Take a look at what we're talking about. 
This is a husband throwing event that happens every year in this small community of Nakata. The husbands are taken to the top of this snowy hill and thrown down the slope to the arms of their waiting wives. This local annual ritual is aimed at strengthening the bonds between married couples in Japan. I imagine it would have to or you'd freeze, All right, Ken, thanks for that. We have breaking news out of Wake County this morning. The freezing temperatures gave some trouble to firefighting crews at a house fire. One firefighter was injured. It happened on Carnoustie Way, just off Creedmoor Road near NC 540. Five people who were inside that home were able to get out safely. Brett Neese was there in the WRL breaking news tracker as crews stayed on the scene for hours. This fire happened here at this home just before midnight and crews spent over seven hours working to put it out because at one point, the road where this home sits froze solid. Take a look, this is a video from the WRL breaking news tracker of some of the damage that is unbelievable to see here to this home. Fire officials tell me that working smoke detectors woke up the family of five. That's why they were able to make it out safely. And once they got here, both floors were fully engulfed in flames. As for these freezing cold temperatures, that caused some issues for firefighters. At one point, they had to call NCDOT to put some salt and sand on the roadway because some of the water that they had used froze solid. So they weren't able to safely replace which trucks were battling the fire. One firefighter was injured. He was taken to the hospital for precautionary reasons, but is expected to be OK. Investigators tell me they're going to wait until it's safe to go inside the home. That's when they'll look at exactly what caused this fire. They don't believe it's anything suspicious, but I'll stay on top of that part of the story and keep you updated. In Wake County, Brett East, WRL News. We now know more about the man accused of shooting and killing two neighbors in an apex neighborhood. And we know the names of the woman, one of the women that were, women that were killed, Nancy Taylor and Gabrielle Raymond. Those are both women that were killed. Harry Hardman made his initial appearance in Wake County Court yesterday. Police say he was causing a disturbance in the Southwalk townhome community on Monday. In a new video shared with WREL by a neighbor, Hardman can be heard calling for the death of students of MIT, Harvard, West Point, and other universities. He also calls for the cleansing of the country. Taylor and Raymond approached him and talked to him. That's when he pulled out a gun and shot both of them. Neighbors say Taylor was the neighborhood HOA leader and Hardman may have gotten into a dispute with her about issues like speeding. Raymond's parents told us on scene their daughter was a chemical engineer who worked at RTI. There'll be no Republican primary debate in New Hampshire. ABC News canceled it after two of the three qualifying candidates declined to participate. Nikki Haley said she would only participate in the debate if former President Donald Trump would be there. DeSantis, uh, as the only candidate committed to the Thursday debate, the network just flat out canceled it. Wake County parents need to start planning for no school on primary election day. The school board voted to cancel school on March 5th. Board members said they were worried this was short notice for many families, but they also said they were concerned about potential safety issues. Dozens of schools are also polling sites and have been have to be open to voters and volunteers. Parents have raised concerns in recent years about schools being open on election days. You can read more about the decision on the education section of WREL.com. Coming up, a viral sleep trend could put an end to arguments with your partner. How the Scandinavian sleep method will end the fight over the corners and help you and your partner get a better night's rest. Plus, a new study will make you want to put down that glass of juice. Coming up, why doctors are saying the drink should be just an occasional treat. Eight forty-three, and it looks beautiful out there with all that sunshine. But that sunshine is no match for the cold air that has moved in across our area. And right now, it's nineteen degrees, and our dew point is six. And this, this, of course, is the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. So that just means it's very dry. We were pretty fortunate that we had this dry air mass move in because it dried the roads out nicely. There have been no problems out there this morning. By lunchtime, we climbed to thirty-five, and then only to forty-one for the high this afternoon. But in comparison, we only hit forty yesterday. The difference is we'll have more of a wind chill today. We take a look at our current. 
current temperatures at 16 in Henderson, 19 in South Hill, and in Lewisburg, it's 13 in Roanoke Rapids, 20 in Rocky Mount and Wilson, it's 16 in Siler City right now, it's 18 in Southern Pines, 19 in Sanford, 22 Fayetteville, 24 in Clinton. So it's very cold start and temperatures have not been budging much. As we look through the day, uh, notice at 9 o'clock it'll still feel like 17, but 24 at 11 o'clock and 29 uh, at around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. The dark purple area is where we have much colder than normal temperatures. We have this Arctic outbreak that has moved in. Now tomorrow it begins to moderate a little bit. We warm up just enough to keep things all liquid, it looks like, for Tuesday night into, oh, excuse me, Thursday night into early Friday. And then right behind it, we have another blast of Arctic air, that dark purple coming in again, well, well below normal. So what is normal? 32 is actually our normal low this time of year. Tomorrow morning, 23. Uh, Friday, it looks like we're going to stay just above freezing, so we're not looking at any frozen precipitation right now. 20 Saturday, 17 Sunday, and 22 Monday. Those are the morning temperatures. But with the wind chill to go along with it, Saturday is likely to feel like 11 in the morning, and on Sunday, that wind chill is sitting at 5. The winds will be a bit breezy on Saturday, so it's likely to feel like maybe 20s all during the afternoon. And finally, Sunday, we start to see things changing a little bit, start to uh, dig out of our hole, if you will. Still going to be a cold one with a high of only 39. But by, uh, by Monday, we're at 48, and by Tuesday, 56 degrees. We definitely have some more cold temperatures. But uh, in the next seven days, Tuesday is the only day that we climb into the 50s. Kids of all ages benefit from some time outside, but what are the best local playground playgrounds for older kids? WREL Lifestyle Editor Kathy Hanrahan is here with a list. Kathy, I don't know about going outside today, but any other day probably would be better. So I've got an 11-year-old and a 4-year-old, so finding a park that has something for both of them can be kind of tough. Um, right now on WRL.com's family section, we've got you covered with a great list of playground options that older children will enjoy, too. Okay, first up, Pleasant Park in Apex. Uh, it's a 92-acre park with giant 35-foot-tall slide, basketball courts, pickleball courts, just a little bit of everything. So much fun. Then we got Sassafras. That's an all children's playground at Laurel Hills Park in Raleigh. A giant playground with lots of nooks and crannies for children to explore. Uh, and there's tons of swings and lots of stuff. A big giant metal slide uh, and goes really fast. And then a, a big zip line. So much fun. Oh my goodness, I want to go. That looks like a lot of fun. And there's a Panthers themed park in Raleigh too, right? Oh, this is so much fun. I've done this with my son. Um, Barwell Road Park in Raleigh has a Panthers Play 60 Challenge course. It's like the Ninja Warrior meets NFL. Okay, you're going through different obstacles. There's a 40-yard dash timer. They have structures for kids 2 to 5 and then 5 to 12. But if these are all, you know, a little bit too cold right now, we do have indoor play options on our website as well. I love it so much. And for more on this family-friendly event, you can go to WRL.com and search family. Thank you so much, Kathy. All right, how about this? Are you fighting over the covers with your partner at night? The viral Scandinavian sleep method that may be for you. It refers to when a couple shares a bed, but each person sleeps with their own blanket. Although this sleep method is not the answer to every couple's sleep problems, it could be helpful in some cases. For example, sleeping with separate blankets if one partner is a restless sleeper or if you have different temperature preferences. Doctors say that uh, with the, the, talking to your significant other about your sleep habits, that's the key. The benefit of creating a unique arrangement like that is that both people get the sleep that they need and, and the sleep that they deserve. Uh, and it's not one person sleeps well at the expense of another person. Yeah, the experts say that uh, it's okay to sleep in different beds as well if you or your partner snores as long as you both get a good night's rest. Yeah, that's what's important, right? Good night's rest. All right, juice lovers, beware. You may want to consider other options to drink with your breakfast. A new analysis of prior studies found drinking a glass of more than 100% fruit juice each day was linked to weight gain in children and adults. Doctors say it's likely because you can easily gulp down too much in one sitting. Fruits have natural sugar that slowly releases into the body, but it rushes into the body when drinking it as juice. Doctors say juice should be an occasional sweet treat. This morning, a housing facility for those experiencing homelessness in Raleigh will reopen. The Cornerstone Service Center will reopen at 10 this morning. It is on Snow Avenue. 
The center provides mental health support and helps people find permanent housing. It underwent $4 million in renovations. The center has 20 units for people to stay in with new ground floor apartments complying with ADA requirements. State education leaders are giving schools the first guidance on how to handle artificial intelligence in classrooms. The North Carolina Department of Public Instruction is the fourth state education department nationwide to put on a handbook to help schools understand how to best use the technology. WRL visited Nash County, where the school district allows teachers to use AI tools like chat GPT, but students are not permitted to use it. But state education leaders say they'll know students will use technology no matter what, and they want teachers to be able to provide guidance on responsible use. Anytime there's innovative technology, North Carolina has been a leader in that area. And to be able to come out and say, if it's a tool that will impact the best learning for students and the best educational experience for teachers, then we certainly want to wrap our arms around that. And the Department of Public Instruction is giving schools the acronym EVERY for how to use AI responsible. Schools should evaluate the input, verify the facts that come back, edit the prompt and ask follow-up questions, revise the results, and maybe most importantly, you should be responsible and transparent about using AI. How about this for honesty? Our Teacher of the Week says she admits she was a terrible student, and that has made her a better teacher. WRL's Brian Schrader pays a visit to Roxborough to honor a, a social studies teacher there who loves her students. <laughs> this is your big day. You can tell that Jennifer Carter at Roxborough Community School truly was surprised. And when I asked her why she became a teacher, the answer was simple. Hey, I'm going to cry. Um, I've always been drawn to children. I feel um, I'm, I have a faith, and I just feel like it's God's calling on my life to just speak to children. The almost life-size animals. Carter loves her sixth-grade social studies students. She believes in giving them a place to be themselves, especially since COVID disrupted their lives. I'm not just worried about what they learn, but I'm worried about their heart. I'm worried about their social-emotional learning. I want them to be able to communicate, you know, how they're feeling with, with someone. A student nominated Carter for WRL's Teacher of the Week, and that recognition means a lot to her. I feel uh, just honored, just incredibly honored and thankful, humbled. Um, I work in a building with amazing educators, um, so, and to be able to be here in this, in this space and to be able to teach the students that I do, I'm just incredibly honored. How about a round of applause for Ms. Carter here? Congratulations to Jennifer Carter, WRAL's Teacher of the Week. I'm Brian Schrader, WRAL News. Love the surprise. You can tell she cares so deeply. If you would like to nominate a teacher, go to WRL.com, enter Teacher of the Week in the search box. A 74-year-old record has been shattered by a Rockingham County basketball player. Paul McNeil Jr. from Richmond Senior High scored 71 points last night in a 118-52 win over Lee County. Bob Poole from Clayton set the previous North Carolina high school record for boys basketball. That was back in 1950. But now Richmond has that honor. By the way, he's also uh, going to NC State to play basketball. Amazing. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and this is amazing, too. The bitter cold in the Midwest gave us one of the most memorable images of the NFL Wild Card weekend. Kansas City Chiefs coach Andy Reid's mustache frozen into icicles. Now this iconic look is being immortalized in cake form. A Kansas City bakery has created the Andy Reid sickle cake. The bakery's owners say response to the whimsical cake has been overwhelming. We've gotten a lot of feedback on social media about it, a lot of laughs. We've actually been talking about maybe some cookies or a cake with a cracked helmet on it. You never know what we're going to come up with here at McLean. Went to yeah, and you might remember this. The cracked helmet is a reference to another viral moment from that game when piece of quarterback Patrick Mahomes' helmet broke off during a hit because it was just so cold. Oh, my goodness. And to popular Raleigh restaurants, Standard Beer is opening a second location in North Hills. Kane Realty says Standard Beer and Food's new spot will be located in the community's innovation district. The restaurant will feature a 15,000-square-foot outdoor space, making it the largest in North Hills. Right now, the only location is on East Franklin Street. Very fun. Before we head to break, here are your winning lottery numbers. We'll get another check on your chilly forecast next.